Hello. Today I wanted to give you guys a brief look at NeoPixel blades in and out because I've had a lot of questions from people about whether or not they should get NeoPixel and I'm on the record as saying NeoPixel isn't always the best solution, which is kind of a uh, controversial point of view to hold right now because the, the Saber market in general is all about NeoPixel. But I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what NeoPixel is, what it looks like inside and out, what features it offers, and a little bit more depth than I have done in past. So what we have here is a uh, Bendu Armory Obsidian NeoPixel setup. And if you notice, when I light this thing up, one of the things that NeoPixel gives you the ability to do is to have a blade that extends or retracts at a slow speed. So power up, power down. All right, now that's something that a lot of people really like and consider as realistic because, or, uh, to, according to the films, realistic according to sci-fi films. But... Um, some of the films, you notice that the sabers will illuminate much quicker than others, uh, as opposed to, so some of the prequel series, they're on almost instantaneously, whereas things like the uh, old Obi-Wan, when he powers up his saber, it's just creepingly slow as it powers up, right? With a base lit hilt, you still do get power up. This is a base lit uh, Bendu Armory Obsidian right here. So the same saber, the same, L or the, uh, the same soundboard, but uh, with a base lit or tricree LED in here instead of LEDs like a, uh, like a NeoPixel that run all the way up the blade. And you'll notice that it's a lot quicker, but when the light comes on, it powers on or it fades on. And if you have it set to do that, when the, bl or when the LED is not very high power, it only goes about this far up the blade. As the power increases, the length up the blade increases. And if it dims too off, you'll see it power down. This one dims or uh, ramps up very quickly and powers down very quickly, but you will still see that the light goes from here up and from here down just a lot more quickly. All right. Now, you saw it creep down a little bit more slowly than it powered up, but you still get that with a uh, base lid. You just can't customize it quite as much as you can with a NeoPixel. So again, with a NeoPixel though, since you're dealing with stages all the way up, uh, or LEDs inside of this hilt, uh, you can also program animations into it. So let me show you some of those real quick. Spectrum. Blade profiles. All right, this is like a rain blade. You can see the dark and light splotches. There's a pulsing. This is a, this is what they call a Sauron, and it's basically we've got a dead spot right here, and it's emanating to both sides of it. It's kind of an odd thing, but uh, and here's a rainbow cycle, faster rainbow cycle, uh, sort of strobing through. This is a gradient, so red to yellow. The strobing through effect is kind of interesting because depending on the color, let me set this. Spectrum. There we go. What I have here is actually kind of a candy cane blade, which is interesting because I set it to red with a white. Uh, it's cycling red and white up and down, so it's a barbershop or a candy cane blade. So let's just leave it there real quick. Power that down. All right, so the NeoPixel gives you the ability to have animations like that. If you try that with a base lit, you can get it to flash between white and red, but you can't get it to climb the blade. Um, but uh, one, or so that's what's possible with the NeoPixel. The downside is that you have a little bit of added weight, and also people argue that NeoPixel blades are durable enough for combat fighting, and some of the more modern ones are. I mean, this is a dueling blade, and I'll show you what this looks like inside in just a moment. 
But the plain and simple truth is the more parts you put into an LED saber that you're going to hit things with, the more parts are susceptible to wear and tear. So while it's not, or while the new ones, especially the heavy grade dueling ones that people like Vader's Vault or Bendu Armory in this case offer, are pretty dang durable and you can duel with them, you have, instead of having a 10 to $20 or even $30 blade, you have a 100 to $170 blade that contains electronic parts that will wear and tear over time, and you'll end up with dead or broken LEDs over time, uh, or bad uh, connection with the saber. So any saber that you duel with is susceptible to wear and tear. The more electronic parts you put in there, the more electronic parts are susceptible to wear and tear. Uh, if you want that effect and you're willing to put in the extra money, then NeoPixel dueling or NeoPixels for dueling, they have gotten to the point. Didn't used to be the case, but they have gotten to the point where they are fairly dual worthy. Uh, it's just if you go crazy with them, be prepared. Going crazy with sabers, doing baseball swings, doing full contact, there's wear and tear on the sabers and things will break. More things is more things that will break. All right, so let me talk to you a little bit about uh, what's in here and what NeoPixels are made of real quick. All right, so I've got two NeoPixel blades here with me by different manufacturers. This one right here is from Bendu Armory, and this is a heavy grade dueling NeoPixel blade. Uh, this one right here uh, originally was from Pock Store. I've uh, given this sort of a Gary Ripper-esque treatment and uh, given it black and lightning and all kinds of things, but the, the basic blade design was from the Pock Store, uh, and so this is similar to some of the more budget NeoPixel blades that you get. This is closer to the uh, 100 to slightly sub-$100 level. Uh, this one's a little bit more expensive, but actually uh, Bendu Armory has been keeping their prices down, and it's it, they're, they're pretty dang reasonable. So this is the budget blade, and I've seen people get these for as little as like 60 or 70 bucks. Uh, this thing is at least 100 but very similar to what you get for like 170 from Vader's Vault, some of the same parts, actually. So let's take a look at what's in here real quick. First off, let's look at the budget blade. All right, so in NeoPixel, we have a NeoPixel pad right here. Uh, and you'll notice that the budget blade has a slightly different setup. This is the uh, Plector Pixel. This is the stuff that you get from Custom Saber Shop, Vader's Vault, Bendu Armory. I think Electrum Saber Crafts look like this. The stuff that you get from Ultimate Works or Pock Store looks like this. There really isn't a difference between the two in terms of functionality. I can pop this blade into my NeoPixel setup that this one was made for, and it works just fine, and vice versa. But let's take a look at the budget one real quick. Uh, there are pins inside the Saber. Now, let's see, you can kind of see them there. See those little dots in a T formation? There's pins in there that are a little bit uh, pressure sensitive pressure sensitive. They push down and they make contact with this pad right here. Over time, there can be a little bit of wear and tear to the pad. There is a little bit of wear on this one, but not much, all things considered. All right, uh, once it makes contact, let me pop this off for you here. Be a little bit careful with the grand reveal because I don't want to mess anything up. But okay, so inside of this one, we have an LED strip that you can't see right now, but I'll see what I can do about that, inside of a foam tube that's flexible. Uh, at the bottom here, this is the base connector that connects the saber to the, uh, the LED strip. There we go. So this one, there's a foam tube, there's an LED strip, the LED strip has some diffusion material wrapped around it, but you can see the, uh, the tip LED right there. All right, so a whole bunch of string or little strings of LEDs. Now, if you guys are used to home decor lighting, like stuff that you get from uh, Costco or something like that, that's those strips of LEDs with a remote control on them. This is basically the same technology. All right, so flexible, um, a little bit of diffusion film, uh, a uh, styrofoam, not styrofoam, foam core, thin-walled blade, 
and this thing just pops right in there. Some of them pressure fit, fit, some of them have a glue on here that keeps them intact, but uh, that's what you're looking at. Now the dueling blade from Vendu Armory, let me get into this one here. Okay, similar design down here. Again, the pad is different. The connection is, uh, is about the same. There's a resistor in here that's um, basically it's a data resistor. It keeps like, keeps uh, or just makes certain that, um, well, here, for instance, uh, this saber right here, this uh, Bendu Armory LED or uh, NeoPixel saber, if I put the Pox Store um, adapter in here that's got tri crease on it, if I pop that in here, there's little flashes of light. Because when the saber, even if the saber is not turned on, uh, as long as it's not in deep sleep mode, there's a little bit of draw coming through here trying to figure out whether or not it's got a blade. The resistor makes certain that none of that gets into the blade and causes all kinds of weirdness. But uh, there's a resistor, there's the pad, and in this one, what we have is a diffusion tube. So instead of having a piece of foam, this is a hard tube, kind of like an extra thin... Um, off-white extra blade inside here so that you've got a blade inside of a blade. Inside of that tube there is foam just like in the other one and inside of that foam is the LED strip. Now you'll notice on the Bendu Armory one that last LED has been bent to point up. This is so that it gets tip illumination and it's shooting that last LED into the tip of the lightsaber so that it gets a solid core effect. Not all uh, NeoPixel blades do that but uh, some of them have kind of a dead spot up at the top, but this one does. So with the dueling blades, you've got a heavy grade or thick grade uh, polycarbonate tube. So this thing can take some serious beating. Inside of that, you've got another tube in this case. Inside of that, you've got foam. And in the middle, you've got that LED strip. So the chances of damaging your LED strip, you'd really have to go crazy with it but the chance is still there and the wear and tear is still there. And if anything in here gets disconnected, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get into it and put it back together. And sometimes it's not even possible, but there we go. Pressure fit in there. So heavy grade, light grade. Now the light grade um, is very usable for spinning, but a lot less durable and a lot more susceptible to damaging the LEDs that are in here. The heavy grade not as usable for spinning because it's heavy, because it's going to throw your balance way off and it feels like trying to swing a baseball bat, uh, but a lot more durable and a lot more things that you can do with it in terms of dueling. So you've got to get a NeoPixel blade that works for you. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention about a NeoPixel blade is when you take on this extra technology, the base lit is like VHS tapes. You put a VHS tape in a player and it plays. You drop a VHS tape down the stairs, uh, cracks all up, you stick a bunch of duct tape on it, you put it in the player and it plays. Okay, um, when you go digital and you have something like an LED, or sorry, not an LED, a DVD or, an, or a 4K disc or even streaming, you're bringing in a technology that has some bells and whistles but has a learning curve attached to that. Now you got to figure out about your internet connection if you're going to stream. Now you got to figure out about your subscription service. Uh, the same thing with the LEDs in here. They come out of the box with a lot of these uh, boards with a whole bunch of neat features. But if you want to program new features into it, you got to know how to code. And if you're looking at a Profi board, there's a real steep learning curve to that. Um, so you have to figure out how to make these LEDs do what they do. And another thing about it is that base lit, you can pop any blade you want into that thing. You can pop a ripper blade. You can pop any length of blade. With the NeoPixel blade, you have to tell the board what size the blade is or else some of the effects don't work. There's an effect called tip drag that's made to look like you're melting things with the tip. You clash uh, and drag it and the tip flashes. It can't do that if the board doesn't know which LED in sequence is the tip. All right, so if I, or when I first uh, was using this short blade on a saber that was set up for it, and then I popped this 36 inch blade into it, it was only illuminating 28 inches of the 36 inch blade and there was a big dead spot at the end. So you gotta program that into the blade as well. So pluses of the NeoPixel blade, you can get some wicked animations. Um, and these days they are a lot more durable. Or durable. 
Uh, downsides of the NeoPixel Blade, cost is still the big one. Uh, the other downside of the NeoPixel Blade is you've got to buy a very expensive blade uh, and you can't really switch them into the NeoPixel setup uh, or switch other blades into the NeoPixel setup. Like I said, there's an adapter, so this is changing, but let's say I wanted to run a cool uh, ripper blade like this, uh, this black blade right here. I pop that into that uh, NeoPixel Saber and nothing happens because there are no LEDs in this thing. If I want one of these with LEDs in it, I gotta pay like four times the cost. So cost, versatility, swappability, these are the things that you sacrifice when you go NeoPixel. What you get is you get the ability to do the animations. And so it's, there's a trade-off. It's not a great tech for anybody. Uh, NeoPixel also has a heavier draw on the battery. The more flashy your effects are, the, uh, the, the, more, the, the more draw you're going to get. And there are people who are running like three LED strips down that thing, and it's going to drain itself pretty dang quick. The base lit LED lasts a lot longer. So if you're out trooping for a whole day in costume, uh, the NeoPixel blade, you're going to want to leave it off most of the time. Just turn it on to impress people at the time. But if you want something that you can carry around, that you can pop a day blade in, that's going to work whether it's off, work whether it's on, that's going to last a lot longer, go with the base lit. Uh, you can get vanity blades for a base lit, like that black one that I showed you a little bit ago. Harder to do with a NeoPixel blade. But if you're doing short runs inside, extra batter, and you've got extra batteries on you and you're not worried about swapping them out, uh, NeoPixel blades are getting a lot more viable as time goes on. So hopefully that gave you a little bit more of an idea of what the NeoPixel is these days and how it's changing and what, it's, uh, what it looks like inside. So uh, that, was, that was my goal, and it hopefully it answered some of the questions that I keep getting asked. Uh, if this was of use to you, join me back for more. I'll be looking at that uh, that Bendu Armory uh, Obsidian Hilt that I just showed you in this video just uh, just a little bit ago. You'll be seeing that in more depth, and we'll be talking about the uh, Crystal Focus X board fairly soon here, too.